Recent events in Brussels have confirmed for us in Europe what we've long suspected, that we're governed by unprincipled, vote-whoring cultural apologists who can't wait to dismantle our heritage in order to show how culturally sensitive they are, and who'd be quite happy to see us all living under Sharia law as long as it keeps them in office. As a result, we've got a situation now in Europe, whether it's halal meat for Danish school children or German judges quoting Sharia law, polygamy legalised in Germany now for Muslim men only, of course, or an Italian court allowing a Muslim to brutally beat his daughter when anybody else would be imprisoned, Islamic values are now being imported wholesale into Europe and are being imposed on a population to whom they're about as welcome as a melanoma. No other religion gets these privileges, and some people in Europe are so angry at this creeping Islamization of their culture that they're starting to protest against it when they're allowed to. Only on September the 11th this year in Brussels they won't be allowed to because a peaceful demonstration intending to mark the anniversary with a minute's silence outside the European Parliament has been banned by the Mayor of Brussels in case certain members of the religion of peace react violently. After all, we wouldn't want to offend people who were dancing in the streets on September the 11th. That would be disrespectful. And before somebody decides to call me racist or Islamophobic yet again, you can save your breath. Islamophobia is not the label of shame it might have been, had it been a more honest word. Thanks to radical Islam and its open hatred of everything we stand for, calling somebody in Europe Islamophobic is now more likely to be taken as a compliment than it is as an insult. And our politicians have only got themselves to blame for that. Because what they need to realise is that we in Europe, we reject Sharia totally. Not because it's different, but because it's barbaric. We once also employed mutilation and gruesome death in the name of religious justice. We called it the Inquisition. But then we came to our senses. Dare I say it, we became more civilised. And before somebody reminds me that Islam preserved ancient scientific knowledge when Europe was still going through the Dark Ages, well, yes, that's very commendable, but you get the impression that Islam wouldn't do that now, because modern Islam, if you'll pardon the expression, seems to be more about bulldozing ancient statues than preserving ancient texts, apart from its own ancient text, of course, and the results of that are there for all to see in any country where Islam has control, notably in the leading Sunni state, Saudi Arabia, or the leading Shia state, Iran both barbaric regimes with brutal Iron Age values. And we don't want that in Europe anymore. I'm sorry to be so racist and Islamophobic and everything, but we've seen how every concession to Islam is the thin end of an even bigger wedge. And we don't want religious police patrolling our streets. Not anywhere for anyone. We don't want legalised rape, amputation, stoning, beheading or any of the other niceties of Islamic jurisprudence where a man's word is worth twice that of a woman as long as he doesn't let on that he's secretly gay of course that would be a fly in the ointment and what a dilemma for the judge he wouldn't know who to stone to death first what I'd like to know from our European politicians if they can spare a couple of seconds to step down off the gravy train is when will it be time to stop showing respect for Islam Will it be when they take away your wine and your beer because they disapprove of it? Would that do it for you? Or perhaps when your wife is beaten up for showing her face in public? Or maybe you'll wait until your daughter is raped and then punished for it. Would you show less respect then or would you continue to be culturally sensitive and suck it up like you're sucking it up now? Because if that's the case, then my advice for the future people of Europe is don't be a woman and don't even think about being gay. I wonder how long it will be before the first European is actually stoned to death for adultery. If that catches on, there'll be hardly anyone left in France. Although that's not strictly true, is it? Because according to current birth rate projections, France will be a majority Muslim country anyway in about 50 years. But something tells me that nobody will be breaking out any champagne. Our friends in America have their critics here in Europe, as we know. But I get a lot of emails from Americans who think that Europeans are spineless. And I think they're right. Yes, we confronted Hitler, but only after a lot of hand-wringing. We could see it coming a mile off, but we only acted when we no longer had any choice, and by then it was too late. 
To make matters worse, most people living in Europe nowadays have never actually had to fight for the freedom they enjoy, and so I think we've forgotten its true value. And this is precisely why our politicians feel that they can trade it away so cheaply for the sake of their own miserable careers. So I say cultural sensitivity be damned. Some things are more important. Peaceful protest and free speech are not negotiable, and anyone who's offended by that can damn well stay offended. Personal faith should stay personal. It has no place in other people's lives. Centuries ago, religion may have had a role to play in maintaining social order, but now it's a threat to social order. It's a threat to world peace, quite frankly, and I think its role should be seriously reassessed in all civilised countries. We need to devalue faith as a currency, especially here in Europe, if we're to survive. We need to put a stop to all religious appeasement. So let's prove the Americans wrong and show them that we do have a spine. We can set them an example of how to get the cancer of religion out of public life for good, because they could certainly use one. Peace to everyone, especially to the mayor of Brussels and his Muslim constituents who keep him in office for the time being.